What's up guys? It's Tuesday. That means it's time for another check-in. Uh, I woke up this morning to some early reports people having issues with the new Steam Beta, which is hooking, um, it's testing the new DualShock API, or yeah, DualShock 4 API that they're trying to integrate into Steam. And people are saying that, um, that the Steam Beta is preventing Input Mapper from getting exclusive access, which is understandable. Um, two programs can't be accessing the controller when one of them is trying to be exclusive. Um, but the other issue is the API in itself, people are saying it's buggy, uh, hardly implements any features of the DualShock 4. Um, so they're trying to stop using it, but Steam isn't allowing Input Mapper to have exclusive control anymore, so there's a conflict there. So um, until there's a way to work around Steam's trying to block exclusive mode, um, it's recommended for people not to get that update unless they really want to, you know, test it out and play around. Um, just, you know, be aware that you'll probably have to roll back to a previous point if you want to go back to using Input Mapper. Um, even, yeah, even people were saying that if you quit Steam, um, it's Input Mapper still won't allow exclusive access. And I've seen programs that do that before. They linger. Um, even after the program cleans up after itself, there, there's lingering connections to the controller that it doesn't release, uh, which is weird. Um, hopefully, I don't know if Steam, I've never tried the Steam controller um, stuff in, that's built into their program, so I don't know if there's an option in there to shut that off completely. Um, if not, then I have uh, no idea how we're going to work around that um, right now that my best recommendation is to just avoid it uh, until either they figure out their bugs or we figure out a way to work around them. Um, but with all that out of the way, um, I have been working on, uh, I don't know if you guys have follow, but a complete uh, from bottom up rewrite of every line of code in Input Mapper from scratch. Um, and that started with the, the MyShock API that I've been writing, uh, which is the new um, like wrapper or middle ground in between the, the controllers and input mapper. That, is, that got to a point last week where it was, uh, I was pretty happy with it. I was solid, so I moved forward into uh, the rework of input mapper itself. And thanks to um, that MyShock API, it's been going actually wonderfully. Um, one of the few times where development on this project has actually been a pleasure because it's going so smooth right now. Uh, so I'll go ahead and launch this off here. And this is... Um, You'll notice it's keeping with the, the latest style that I released in Input Mapper uh, 1.6.10. Uh, but this is completely from scratch. Um, I'm just going off of some of the inspiration that I've, you know, gathered there. And uh, this is what we're looking at so far. Um, I, these are live controllers. These aren't uh, just representations. I do have a DualShock 3 plugged in by USB and a DualShock 4 by uh, Bluetooth. Um, is my DualShock 3, and this, uh, the DualShock 3 is thanks to um, Benjamin Hollister's, uh, aka Nefarious, um, writing an actual wonderful uh, HID, uh, like a user mode driver for the DualShock 3 called a uh, FireShock, and uh, using that driver, it opens the device up just like any other HID device, so it works with the Input Mapper uh, great now, so. Uh, really excited to have the inclusion of that controller in there uh, from here going forward. Um, of course, you know, DualShocks 4 obviously supported. Um, and the great thing that, you know, with uh, rewriting all this is, you know, I've learned a lot, uh, especially with the Input Mapper 2.0 development and especially in regards to, you know, class objects, how uh, you can use them in WPF and actually bind um, create data views and all that stuff for the devices and it eliminates a lot of code for me so this stuff is very fast um, streamlined it's a very small program so far 
Um, I don't have a lot of code. It doesn't take like a whole bunch of code in the background anymore like it used to where if, you know, I had to repopulate all these menus every time I'm adding, uh, every time I'm adding profiles. Um, since it's all bound data now, um, it just kind of does it all automatically, which is great. Um, so, I mean, yeah, all that stuff is happening on the fly. Um, another cool thing that I'm incorporating into it is uh, the ability to, after the fact the controller is connected, you can, uh, you can request exclusive mode if, it doesn't, if it's not able to do it automatically after the fact. Um, so here, you see I have this little icon. Uh, it says it wasn't able to, you know, connect exclusively um, due to another application competing. Uh, I can click it to try it again. Um, yeah, unfortunately that's a bug right now. I'm working on that still. Go ahead and start it again. It's supposed to blink red if I click it again and it fails. Um, that blinking red is bugged right now, so I'm working on that. Um, but yeah, let me run the exclusive mode tool. Uh, typically this will run in the background, but I don't have it fully incorporated yet, so. All right, so now we have it here. And if I click it now, there we go, just got exclusive mode after the fact, so. Um, I'm not sure where this Phantom controller came from, that shouldn't be popping up. Uh, another bug. Like I said, I'm in the middle of development, so I mean, stuff like that's gonna pop up. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, it's, it's so little code right now to do, you know, even these things that prior, you know, I had hundreds of lines of code where I was hooking events and binding stuff. Um, that, you know, with so little code now, it's actually running very smooth. Um, once, you know, I get finish this up and, you know, polish it off and all that, I suspect, you know, it'll probably run a lot better for people. Um, a lot less quirks than, you know, it used to get. Um, obviously, you know, I have a couple quirks that I need to figure out on my end, but that's to be expected in the middle of development, so. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much where I stand right now. Uh, I've got a lot more work to do on it moving forward. Um, uh, I still have to implement uh, like all the properties and the profiles. I have profiles in there, um, but right now there are no properties in it. The profiles are pretty much just blank except for a name. Uh, so, you know, I have to go through and implement all that stuff. Um, macros and stuff need to come over. Uh, so, I mean, there's still a lot of work to do, but it's going along very smoothly uh, at a good pace. So, um, I expect to have this done. Uh, or I'll, I'll at least probably be able to get a couple versions out to people uh, within the next couple weeks. So, that's a pretty good time frame. All right, guys. Well, that'll do it for this week. Y'all have a good one.